So good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to welcome you to this new ArcelorMittal Stelligence webinar. So as you may already know, um, Stelligence is a new business division for construction within ArcelorMittal. Uh, and we help architects and engineers to optimize their structure in steel, thanks to a, a portfolio of products. And this is the topic of today, because today we will uh, talk to you more specifically about sections and Mark May, uh, who is st uh, a Stelligence construction engineer, will present you this during uh, this uh, uh, 30, 40 minutes presentation. So if you have any questions, please uh, ask them thanks to the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And we will make our best to answer them at the end. Um, and just one more thing, this webinar will be recorded. So if you missed it or if you want to view it again, it will be sent to you and available on YouTube uh, in the coming days. Thank you very much and enjoy. Thank you, Justine, and uh, hello to everyone. So me, just to introduce myself, I'm Mark May. I'm a structural engineer at uh, Asamita Intelligence. And uh, as uh, already explained by Justine, we're providing an uh, technical advisory service to uh, our customers, but also to other uh, stakeholders of projects like uh, engineers, architects, uh, investors. And uh, in that context, we see quite often uh, projects where the steel we are offering is not used in an optimized way. And this is why this seminar is now here to explain a bit how we see an optimal use of uh, steel in your projects. Maybe this is an uh, overview of my presentation. So just uh, the introduction took place. I will speak a bit about uh, seed production to better understand the context and the, the possibilities of steels we are doing. Then we are coming more specifically to steel grades, subgrades and uh, the delivery conditions. I present advanced rolling. I present later on some uh, asymmetric innovations and solutions. Our technical advice and finishing services and just before the question answering, we will summarize the presentation. So what is the big advantage of steel? Steel is completely recyclable. We produce already today about two thirds of our steel based on scrap. So it is already recycled steel coming from, for instance, automotive or other wasted steel products. And then and after, after use of steel, it can be again and again recycled. So there is a closed loop for steel, which is a very good advantage compared to other structural materials like, for instance, concrete, where in, in case of demolition of a building, you have only the chance to downcycle the material. You can't use it for new concrete. You can only use it, for instance, for road works or other um, similar applications. So we produce uh, steel since more than 100 years and uh, specifically heavy steels. So steels uh, which have a huge weight or uh, big dimensions. We also produce, uh, as you see here on the steel that since more than 100 years, uh, the first beam ever rolled with more than one, with one meter height was produced uh, in June 1911 here in Luxembourg. And uh, today, we do, of course, even heavier beams. So this is just an example of a bridge girder we fabricated completely and shipped to the job site with a length of 42.5 meter. So how are beams a road? In principle, you have a set of roads, which are with their distance defining the, the thickness of flanges and webs. And uh, of course, this thickness can be adjusted. So in one rolling campaign, you can roll different sizes. So you may know the HE series, HEA, HEB, HEM. They are rolled uh, for one size. So just an example, the HE300 will be rolled in one rolling campaign, or ABM in one rolling campaign. And this is quite effective in terms of production. And that's why steel is uh, uh, so economical. This is one reason why steel is so economical. So we are a, a full supplier. That means we offer the full range from the smallest sizes to the heaviest sizes uh, in the world. And also in terms of grades, the, the steels are available from mild steel, S235, up to very high 
500 MPa yield strength, which is nowadays covered in EN10025. Um, I will come to this more in detail later. Uh, sections in Europe are defined in the um, dimension standard EN 10, oh, uh, 10365. And here you find uh, the tallest sections in the world. So uh, very, huge, very uh, heavy ones of 1,377 kilo per meter, um, which are mostly used for heavy trusses, for bridge applications and so on. And we have a size which we call HD 400 times 1299, a very heavy one with 140 millimeter flange thickness. And this one is used uh, mostly for column application. But here again, it can be used for heavy trusses and so on. So there is a wide range of products available for a wide range of possible applications. All our section sizes you find in our um, rolling program or sales program. So you find all I and H and also channels available in grades and dimensions according to Euronorm EN, American Standard ASTM, Russian Standard GOST. And uh, so this is not, no longer fully new, but since 2017, there is this dimension standard 10365 for hot rolled steel channels, uh, I and H sections and uh, yeah, channels as I said. And this standards, all the dimensions and uh, weights are defined. And here, the main, the main families we are producing in Europe are IPE, so the slender ones, the HE, the, the, the wide flange beams, HL, very high wide flange, wide flange beams, and HD uh, column sizes, column sections. Um, so this is an overview about the sections we are producing, just for, for an idea. So as I said, again, uh, from the smallest to the heaviest, from IPE80 to IPE750, in HE from 100 to 1000. Um, the HL family ranks from 920 to uh, 1100, with different uh, foot weights. And the HD, the column family ranges from 260 to 400. 260, 220, and so on is the nominal height, and uh, the the weight is given as an indication uh, of the section size. Uh, also, the UB beams, which were formerly in a British standard, are now in this European norm in the uh, EN 10365. And also here we offer the full range, and even uh, some some sizes more, which were not in the former BS4 standard. Um, which is retired, uh, which is withdrawn in the meantime. So more in detail, if you look into our catalog, which is, uh, by the way, available for download on our website, uh, there you have all the necessary information about every specific section. So you have uh, the dimensions, you have also surface, which you, you need to know for, for paint, for the paint calculation, calculation of the paint. You have an indication about the available steel grades. And here we are only showing the steel grades, which are, let's say, not always used. Of course, we also produce S235, S275 uh, commodity grades, uh, but we do not mention here them uh, specifically because it's clear when we can do good, we can do also lower steel grades. Then you have uh, here on the, on the right part of the, of the slide, you have uh, more detailed the section properties. So the uh, moment of inertia, for instance, um, or the, the torsional moments. Uh, you have the classification for the slenderness of the web section, uh, depending on the steel grade. And you have also the massivity defectors, which you need to know for the calculation of the paint thickness in case you need to fire protect the beams. So, now, more specifically to, to steel grades. Steel grades in Europe are defined in the EN10025 uh, standard. In this standard, you find the steel grades from S235 to S500 with some given uh, subgrades. S stands here for structural steel. The, the number is, stands for the uh, yield strength, the minimum yield strength. And the letters later stands for the toughness requirements. So uh, JR means uh, 20, 20 joule at room temperatures, temperature. J0 means uh, 20 joule at uh, zero degrees. And J2 means uh, 
30 joule at minus 20 degrees test temperature. Um, this is uh, important in case uh, you have uh, toughness requirements. Um, I'll show you later a table where the toughness requirements are defined in your code three. Then this is now part two of EN 10 or 25, the non-alloyed steel part. There are three delivery conditions uh, defined. First, uh, as rolled, indicated with plus AR, normalized with plus N, on thermically rolled with plus M. And the mechanical and physical characteristics are independent of the delivery condition. The delivery condition is only an indication of the, fab, of the producer, it, 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 this is us, uh, how we produce the steel. And we, in typical, if we produce thermically rolled steel, so plus M. Then you have part four of the standard 10 or 25, uh, the fine grain steels. Uh, these are thermochemically rolled, weldable fine grain steels. Again, the S stands for structural steel, the number stands for the minimum yield strength, and the M, ML stands for toughness requirements. It is important to say that thermochemically rolled steels are uh, very tough steels. So the M is has the same requirements than the K2. So the toughest steel you, you have in um, part two of 10025, uh, ML is even tougher. So we have a 20, 20 joule at minus 30 degrees. The normative situation, of course, all steel grades from S235 to S460 are fully covered by design standards, by EU code three and four. Uh, by the product standard EN 10.025 and very important also by the execution standard. So that means uh, you can use the full range of steels we are offering uh, without any restrictions. So this is a bit uh, an overview how this, how this works together. You have the EN 1090, which is the delivery conditions for prefabricated steel components. Um, which covers the production of steel, the steel fabrication, so uh, welding, cutting, drilling, uh, and so on. You have the EU code, uh, the EU code zero for basis of such a design, EU code one for the actions, and EU code three for the design rules for steel structures. structures sorry. And here the EU code three is divided in uh, several parts, a lot of parts. In fact, uh, you have part one, which covers, uh, among others, uh, for instance, connections or um, the, the tension elements or, yeah. The general rules covers also in one, two, one, part one, two, the fire. Then you have a part uh, two for the bridges, a part six for grains and so on. And all this works together uh, with all the scientific background, uh, with a lot of tests being, being performed over, over decades for defining the safety and making the, the steel structure, first of all, safe, but also, uh, of course, sec uh, economic. So the toughness requirements, I already uh, said a word about it. So uh, it, for instance, in Germany, still quite often S235JR is used. And if you look here into this table coming from your code 3110, which is dedicated to the toughness requirements, you see for here, for instance, for a reference temperature of minus 20 degrees, the maximum thickness of, of the S235JR would be 35 millimeter. Now, some people fear if they go for a higher grade, uh, they would reduce this, this thickness. This is true in principle. However, you see here, uh, comparing S335 with S235, already with an S35J0, you have the same maximum uh, thickness than with S235JR. So that means the, 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 the steel is, uh, in terms of uh, requirement, is not much higher. So you can, you can use, you have still a, a quite uh, economical steel, which you can use to replace uh, the basic one. So in general, by using S335 of, uh, instead of S235, it can be achieved that the section size can be reduced by at least one footstep. Quite enough, it's, 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 uh, it's two or more. Um, this is 
as a price, let's say per meter, always cheaper than using a mild steel. Then you may have additional cost savings in fabrications because you will need to weld less material. So you have smaller weld sites. Um, additionally, you have uh, smaller pieces to lift and so on. So there are some, some small savings, but still they are there. Um, the material cost of S355 over to S235 is of course given, but it's more than balanced by the savings you can achieve in material cost uh, in weight and in fabrication. Uh, about uh, execution classes, so common steel structures are typically executed in execution class two, which requires an inspection certificate 3.1. And this needs to be specifically ordered for S235, but for S2, S3.5, it is typically included. So there is another benefit uh, in using S3.5. Uh, in Germany, as said, still quite often S235 is used for all projects and elements uh, in all, all sizes, but the, the execution class is typically execution class two. So you would need to, to order an S235 with 3.1 certificate. It's far easier and far cheaper to use S355, which was in the past somehow the steel to optimize a structure. So if you have a, had a, a steel uh, structure in S235, you could lower cost, weight, et cetera, by using S345. And we expect in the future that S345 will become the base grade. And uh, of course, it's still possible to optimize uh, by using higher strength steel like S460M. And this is, of course, more relevant for heavy loaded structures, heavy stress structures in, in bridges, in industrial applications, in columns, um, and so on. And also for higher execution classes. So in Germany, we recommend for grades and subgrades for thicknesses below 30 millimeter, S355 J0 is typically Perfect, perfect uh, as application. Sometimes uh, if you have higher toughness requirements, you can use S345 J2. Then from 30 to 80 millimeter material thickness, we um, recommend to use S355 M, so a fine grain steel, which has the advantage of a much lower carbon equivalent as you see here at the end of the table in the, in the right column. And uh, carbon equivalent gives an indication about the weldability. So the lower the carbon equivalent, the better the weldability is. And you see here, for instance, very thick material in S355M, so starting at 63 millimeter, has the same carbon equivalent than an S355J0 below 30 millimeter. So that means the weldability is at least the same or better. Then above 80 millimeter, for toughness reasons, we recommend to use S345 ML and for all thicknesses for optimization purposes S460 M can be used sometimes uh, it's it's possible or necessary to use S460 ML in case of higher toughness requirements so is this too good to be true so here we are comparing mild steel S235 S275 with the future standard S355 and uh, optim op steel for optimizing purposes S460. Uh, starting at the yield strength, everything based on S235. So S355 has a 50% higher yield strength than S235, S235, but only 5% higher material cost. Now the average material consumption is only 85%. That means if you multiply the unit cost with the material consumption, your material cost for an element or for a project would be only 90% than that one of a normal, of a, a um, base grade like S235. The traceability, this is uh, about the certification, is specific in case of S355 versus non specific for S235 and S275. The weldability, as explained, is good. The weld quality requirements are standard uh, versus elementary, so uh, they are a bit, bit higher, but if you follow usual weld quality rules or welding uh, process rules, you always achieve these standard requirements. And the mill availability is good, 
So you don't need to, to fear any restrictions in, in availability of this material. Coming a bit uh, more into the topic of advanced rolling. This is a, a bit of a timeline, the product quality over time. So after, after the war in the 50s or so, all steels were produced as rolled. So with a rather base quality. Then in the early 60s, the temperature control rolling or today we call it normalized rolling was invented, uh, which already allows to produce uh, a better steel. In the 60s, thermomechanical rolling was invented, again, improving the quality. And what we call advanced thermomechanical rolling includes first uh, selective cooling invented in the 70s and quenching and self-tempering, QST, invented in the 90s. So what's this? Um, so we produce steel in the electric arc furnace. Here you see a picture of the electric arc where the electric arc is, is, um, yeah, is started. This is why it's like, it's in principle like welding. So you did the same process, you, you, so you put energy, you put electricity and the scrap you, were, you have put in the electric arc is, is, is smelting. Then this melted steel is casted out in the continuous caster to so-called beam blanks, which were then reheated and rolled out in the rolling mill to the final product. And here we apply during this rolling, first selective cooling, and secondly, the quenching and self-tempering. So selective cooling, again, comparing different processes over time, this is the traditional process uh, as rolled. So the, the after rolling, the, the beam has a temperature of about 800 degrees C and uh, it's cooling faster on the flange tips than on the junction between flange and web. And this is here distributed with this temperature, this increased temperature at this junction. And what this is somehow um, not very favorable for the steel. Uh, all the all in welding engineers remember that this zone was difficult to, to weld. It was even sometimes recommended to not weld there and so on. Uh, this is today not critical anymore because we cool these parts selectively down by spraying water on this part. And like this, we have an even temperature um, distribution over the whole section. And this gives much better material properties. So this is how it looks like in, in the mill. Uh, this darker part is dark because it was cooled. It was cooled down selectively. This is a picture of this beam coming out of the rolling stand with uh, selective cooling. On top of that, what we, what we are applying for fine grain steels is the quenching and self-tempering process. Here in this picture, the, the beam is coming from, from the back part of the picture and running to the final rolling stand here in front of the picture. And again, you see on the color, you have 850 degree starting temperature. You quench the surface, the whole surface during the rolling by uh, uh, bringing water on the surface. And uh, you see it's, it's gray at the beginning of, of, the, the, of the process. The surface is gray and it's getting red again. This is the reheating. So, um, this reheating to a self temperature temperature of about 600 degrees helps the steel to improve its properties. So the, the properties are defined not only by chemistry, but also by the, the grain size. Here we compare as rolled um, size grains with the thermocanic rolled M and Heister. So in the S rolled production process, uh, the grain sizes are quite big. You have uh, quite uh, big inclusions and so on. So the, the steel properties are uh, somehow uh, limited in terms of quality. When applying thermomechanical rolling, we roll the material at lower temperatures. So we roll with higher pressure. And like this, we reduce the grain size, we reduce the inclusions. And if then a QSD, a quenching self temperature is applied additionally, where the surface is cooled down and reheats to the, to the core temperature, then you have this uh, super fine grain steel, which, which has excellent properties in terms of strength in terms of toughness and also in terms of uh, the chemistry uh, with uh, the related welding process. 
This process uh, is covered by an ETA, a European Technical Assessment. And uh, this, in this case, we sell our steel as uh, under the trademark of Heister. Um, and Heister has a lower, a higher strength, sorry, than the, the standard steel you find in EN 10025. So here we, you, we, you have the reduction steps you have to apply when using steel according to EN 10025 in blue, or if you use uh, 10025 part three in red. And with high source with a five, you have uh, no reduction in yield strength over the whole yield strength, over the whole uh, thickness range. That means you can use a high source with a five in 140 millimeter with 355 megapascal yield strength. Uh, for high star for 60, you have one reduction step at, four, at 100 millimeter from 460 to 450. Um, this gives a big advantage uh, in terms of uh, economical structures uh, when using heavy sections. Another advantage of high strength steels is that they have a better imperfection values, and like this, they have better buckling curves and euro codes. Um, so, back to buckling factor. Uh, Buckling curve A is related to this imperfection, imperfection factor alpha. And this allows to, to uh, optimize your structure. Here we have an illustration example, a rolled section versus a welded section. We had a tender on the table uh, where uh, dimensions of plate, uh, plate girder welded from plates or where were specified. So 600 by 600 millimeter outer dimensions. 80 millimeter flanges, 60 millimeter web, all in SP5. The yield strength, uh, according to EN1025, was 325 megapascal. And the buckling curve is buckling curve D only when looking into your code 3. So this results in a, in a section which has 960 kilogram per meter weight. And uh, in during production, you need to cut out the plates from a bigger plate. So you have some kind of scrap. You need to weld them together. You maybe need some kind of milling and preheating for, for before welding. And you need to test the welds after, after the welding. Uh, and the final question is, what about the availability of, of these uh, heavy plates? So we proposed against this an uh, optimization with a rolled section, HD 400 times 60, 677, in high stuff for 60, which first of all, as a much higher yield strength, so 460 megapascal versus 325. The buckling curve A, the much better buckling curve uh, for world section in 460 than a, a world section in, in 355. So like this with the same, let's say, um, compressive, compressive or, or normal force resistance, uh, the ride can be reduced by 30% to 670, 70 kilogram per meter. So this is also a huge cost reduction then there is no fabrication, so no cutting, no scrap, 100% uh, um, optimization, 100% savings. Um, you don't need to mill or preheat before welding, again 100% savings, and you don't need to test. So you have the section ready to use um, from, from, from the welding process. Whereas in the, in the initial solution, you have much more work to do and like this much more cost. Sorry. Um, when comparing um, rolled sections, uh, this is an example for a given buckling length of 3.5 meter with a given um, resistance of about 4,000, 4,400 kilonewton. Uh, so for this um, load, you need either an HE280M in S235 or an HE320B in S345 or an HE300A in high stuff for 60. Taking the S355 as reference in terms of cost and weight, you see here that the material, the weight of the, the, the section S355, S235, sorry, is, is much higher. That's why the cost is also much higher. But in high stuff, the weight is uh, much lower. You can use a smaller section. Uh, you reduce the weight by 68%. Okay, the cost per ton is a bit higher. But still, the price or the cost um, per element is only 70% of the solution in S355. I think this is self-explaining. You see here, the, the higher the weight, the higher the savings uh, 
for, for the same application. We can also do this for uh, an example using used in a truss, a truss called intention. And here it's not only material where you can save, it's also uh, the material. So we imagined here, or we, we investigated a case where the distension cord was fully, uh, fully welded splice. And here, because of, of the smaller material, you need much less weld volume. So the weld volume can be reduced to 53%. And with the weld volume, of course, you, you reduce the, the weld time. Uh, the high sulfur 60 has the additional benefit that you don't need to preheat. So you need, uh, you, you save again uh, preheating time. And uh, the, the, the cost of the solution is much cheaper than, than the initial one. In uh, car parks in Germany is for the girders S460 as the standard. And this is not surprising, because if you have this small type table here, comparing uh, S235 used in the past with S460 used today, for the same load, the same span, so a 60 meter car park girder in composite, in the past you used, you need, you need an IPE 600, whereas today you could make use of IPE 500, so 100 millimeter less. Uh, in addition, the benefit would be less building heights, uh, shorter ramps and so on. Uh, the yield strength is uh, for the IPE 225 because this needs to be reduced according to EN 10025, whereas the IPE 500 can be used at with a full yield strength for 60 megapascal. Um, the weight can be reduced by 24% from 2.12 ton per piece to 1.61 ton. Uh, the cost uh, can be reduced from 100% to 83%. Uh, of course, these are not precise figures. This is an, 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 an example given on a, on a cost at a certain moment. So price base not mentioned here is uh, 2010. But uh, today we have higher material cost. That means even the, the difference would be favorable for the higher strength steel because the more steel uh, you, need, uh, you save, the more cost you save. So in total, uh, volume for car park girders in the initial, initial solutions would be with 430, 530 tons, uh, and for 60, only 403. So this is, again, this 34% uh, saving. And you can load more beams per truck because the beams are smaller, they are lighter. So you can uh, save on, on the trucks to job site. You can uh, spare seven trucks by, 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 yeah, in fact, by using a higher strength loading less beams and uh, have less transportation. So now I would like to present uh, some further innovations from ArcelorMittal, which you maybe already know, it's not completely new, but uh, still it's worth to mention. We developed a system, a composite slim floor beam, which can be used with different types of, of um, deckings, like uh, our own uh, Coffer Plus 220, a deep decking, uh, or our Coffredal, a very light one. And uh, the secret is we just drill a hole in the web of the, the section where a weaver is passed through on the job site. And this is then concreted all together and works as a composite beam. And this is uh, quite effective um, and can be combined with various uh, slab types. So like, uh, like I said, the Coffer Plus 220 or Coffer Dal, but also with uh, prefabricated concrete or even wood elements uh, could be possible. It would be beneficial to use um, slabs with low self weight. And the application range is uh, for a beam span of uh, 7 to 12 meter, in some cases up to 14 meter. And the beam distance from 5 to 10 meters in order to have to, the weight, the, the steel consumption per meter square, very low and like this very effective. So this can be applied, of course, for offices, hotels, and storage buildings, and so on. And this is now a job site picture. On the left, you see just the beam where the, and the decking installed. And on the, on the right, it's with all the necessary uh, reinforcement. Um, so the, the, you have some rebus pathings through the web. And uh, on top of that, you have some kind of um, map. And then you concrete, just concrete and uh, it's finished. So, 
And uh, just by the way, the Kafka plus 220 can be done without um, support. So this is to present an, uh, an example. This is a, a high-rise in uh, Moscow where the columns were made of a high for 60. It's a typical uh, layout. So we have a concrete core and the surrounding steel structure stiffened with some outriggers to bring the, the wind loads, loads down to the foundation. And these outriggers, as well as the columns, are made out of uh, bolt sections in high for 60. Here you see a bit of the, the connection, so it's all bolted. It's very effective. And this is uh, the fabrication in the job site with some uh, test assemblies to make sure that the pieces will fit when they come uh, by truck to the job site. So we offer some uh, technical advice at finishing. So we would be happy to be contacted by you after this webinar or in, in, in a future time um, with your project where you can give uh, some, some optimization proposals, some recommendations and so on. And also we can offer a finishing service so our um, technical advisory uh, focused on project specific support in conception and, and optimizations of elements or structures. Uh, what, what, what's the more, more important thing for you? And the, the benefit or the, the target is to, to find a simple solution, which at the same time uh, have a reduced cost. Wherever possible and reasonable, we use, of course, a high strength steel. And this service is free of charge. And you have also on our website some free of charge um, tools like pre and softwares or tables or spreadsheets. So one uh, is our submitted orange book where you find the section properties and resistance of all our sections in, uh, in the European size range. And for three uh, different national annexes, so the, the UK one, the German one and the Polish one. Um, and additionally, we offer some, I said, some software. So here we have some, uh, just some snapshots for the cellular beam softwares, which we are offering, which can be used for designing roof girders or composite beams with openings, which can be interesting to pass some building techniques through. And we have here an example of a large logistics hall uh, with uh, three times 26 meter for the base and a length of 134 meter which was done completely with uh, these uh, cellular beams as a roof girder of 26 meters span. And then uh, you see the bit on the right, um, the techniques and uh, the sprinkler and everything was passed through the openings to reduce the building height. Looking now uh, at crane one-way beams, um, many people don't use the right section when designing crane runway beams because they are not really trained, maybe, um, about the availability of HD. So the column sizes we are offering are, of course, not only columns. The advantage of these kind of sizes is they have a very high resistance above the weak axis, so the z-axis. So here is comparing some sections with the same amount of steel per meter, more or less, so the same surface per meter to about 200 square centimeter. And you see the HD has a 45% uh, higher um, moment of inertia about the weak axis than in, in the typically used HEA section. And this makes it quite effective. Uh, so here, this is an, 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 an overview for a two-way crane one-way with two times seven meter span in S355. And um, for a reload of 200 kilonewton, you see here for the different um, size ranges, the, 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 uh, re the admissible reload. And you see for HEB, uh, HEA, HEBM, it's somehow limited. So uh, there, there's, it's difficult to find a solution, uh, especially if when you look uh, for, for an economic solution uh, for a reload over 200 kilonewton. And here the HD sections are coming to play. These are the orange lines, where you see that uh, they, they are the most effective. So by the same area, by the same weight, they offer far higher reloads than HE sizes. HE sizes are very good, very effective for, for, for small reloads, but uh, for higher reloads, 
we strongly recommend to look at HD and HL sections. And this was also um, published by Bauforum Stahl, the German uh, promotion organization for steel, uh, also in English language, uh, in, in, a, in a table format, where the maximum reloads for different crane capacities and crane run beam spans are given. Everything in uh, S-305 and uh, in one or two bay configuration. And this can be downloaded for free from the Bauforum Stahl website. And now coming just to finishing. So we are offering as a service to our customers uh, operations like sewing or cutting, like pre cambering or cambering of about both axes. We can drill and weld and perform weld preparation and we can do corrosion protection. So a typical example is for instance, a bridge where we can uh, supply the beams ready to install the job site or for car parks Quite often the steel fabricators don't have own um, possibilities to make uh, S460 girders of 60 meter lengths. So we are offering only these beams and all the remaining steel structure is done by the steel fabricator who is later on also responsible for the erection. So my summary. Our hardwood sections are an industrial produced and standardized product, which has a very high quality and a very good availability. And in structural steel, uh, the costs are to minimize, not necessarily the weight. Quite often this, this comes together, but not necessarily. And uh, it's better to use simple conceptions, which have a slightly higher weight, but then a, a reduced cost. High strength steel should be used everywhere where cost optimization and slender elements make sense. And then you can gain a lot of time in design when using our tables or present tools. Then we will support you in, in the conception and in the supply, even of elements ready to install when we are offering fast and flexible solution. So thank you very much. And I would like to, would like, I would be happy to answer your questions. Yes, so I see there is already four or five questions. So I will go ahead. So do S275 and S460 have similar embodied carbon? Uh, yes, in principle, they have the same embodied carbon. Um, but the only thing is, of course, when you use S460, you have much smaller element. So the, the, the cost or the weight savings are directly also related to the carbon savings. Um, there is a question. Uh, it's uh, asking if we have high star for high star grade for plates. We don't offer high star grades for plates. High star is dedicated to our rolling processes in Luxembourg for sections. Then there is um, two questions uh, about car parks. So in the design of car park beams, how to deal with deflection? Yeah. Good question. Uh, car park girders are typically pre-cambered. They can be even very, uh, very strongly pre-cambered. So we saw examples with uh, some 20 centimeter or, or more pre-cambering. And this is balancing the deformations. And uh, yeah, like this, it's done. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, and then uh, how do we have uh, uh, higher grade subgrades under fire conditions? Again, uh, it's uh, related to the car park beams. Yes. Uh, so if it's related to car parks, it's maybe important to mention the car parks, open car parks typically don't need no fire protection um, because in case of a fire, all the heat and the smoke can evacuate, evacuate through the open facades. So there are no fire requirements. Uh, but if there are some fire requirements, um, for 60, all the secrets in, in fact behave the same as per your code uh, 3, uh, part 1, 2. Okay, so and the uh, reduction factors for yield strength and uh, also modelers, young modelers. Uh, there is a question if we have uh, already available S400, uh, S400 for UCs, the UC shape. We have uh, for UC shapes S460 available, yes. And then they are asking uh, if in high star, so I guess if we have high star 500. 
We, we offer S460, we offer S500, we offer Heister 460. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's per your, your requirement. So I get, but I understand Heister 500, we, we are not uh, uh, proposing. No, we, we, I mean, Heister is covered by an ETA, a European Technical Assessment. And this was done before the new version of EN 10025, which was issued in 2019. So at that moment, uh, we were limited to 460 steel. With the new version of 10025, we have S500. So we are offering, of course, S500 according to EN 10025 2019. Uh, and we are offering high star 460 according to, to ETA, but no high star 500 yet. Okay, it might come in the future. Perfect. Uh, a question from the, from the UK, uh, more and more requests for reduction of carbon footprint. Do you have solution for low carbon? Yes, we do. Uh, when we stay with high star, we have an EPD dedicated to high star steels. Uh, so it might be interesting to mention there is an EPD on European level over different producers and over different products, which shows a value of 1130 kilo per ton of steel. And just to compare, in our Heister EPD, we offer 524 kilo per ton of steel. So a bit less than, than 50%. Mm -hmm. This can be used for Heister steels, of course, straight away. And the EPDs uh, are also available on our website. Okay, I don't know if you want to mention, maybe we have also now, no, uh, soon uh, a new low carbon uh, steel, no, with uh, even lower value. Yes, uh, there, there, there is a, a, a solution on the way, which we call X-carb, and X-carb is offering even lower carbon equivalents. We hope to have there an EPD quite soon. And uh, yeah, there was another question related to, to plate, but uh, since we replied already, there is no, no plate. So um, yeah, uh, so far it's uh, all the question we have. So yes. I guess, yeah, you can maybe finish with a few words. <laughs> yes, so yeah, thank you for listening. And uh, of course, if, if there are further questions or some, some project informations where you need some, some support, uh, please don't hesitate to, to send us an email or to, to ring us. Uh, I'm not sure if my email address was already mentioned on the slides, um, but uh, I'm, I'm, it's, you maybe saw it at the beginning. It's uh, mark.may at arslamita.com. So if there are any questions, feel free, to, feel free to send me an email. So thank you very much and uh, have a nice afternoon.